Okay, next up for review we have a Ricochet re-release of a Lucasfilm slash Activision game. The game is the Eidolon. So let's load it up and see what it's like. Here's the front cover then. And it's a usual Ricochet type offering. Uh, but I love the artwork on this one. I've got the Eidolon logo at the top there, but look at this artwork, it's awesome. You've got the uh, the Eidolon itself, which is this uh, metallic sort of steampunk style vehicle. And you've got all these creatures trying to attack it. So you've got weird sort of, well, goblins, I suppose, that is, with a, a Viking's hat on and a wolf and something with a big mouth and various other things. But yeah, really nice piece of artwork. And spine, as you'd expect from a Ricochet release. And back cover couple of screenshots from the Commodore 64 version a couple of review quotes and a bit of intro about the game discover the secrets of the Eidolon, a mysterious 19th century machine crafted of wood and brass powered by forces of magic and a quick look inside we've got uh, how to control the Eidolon and then we've got hints red fireballs are deadly And inside some more instructions, how to replenish your energy reserves, more about fireballs, different ones, red, gold, blue and green, and also the load instructions. And that's it. So, here's the uh, opening screen for the first level. There is a title screen for the game, but it only shows for a few seconds while the game is loading. Uh, so I didn't get a chance to record that. So uh, we'll crack on with level one. For some reason, pressing fire is not good enough and you've got to press F1 to start. So there you go. And uh, you materialize in this hallway uh, and it's a first person view, 3D-ish kind of interpretation of a cave uh, and uh, that thing in front of you there is a kind of a pill that you can pick up which I think builds your energy up if I remember rightly the yellow ones so you can pick those up in fact I've got full energy at the moment so it doesn't really matter I won't pick any more of those up uh, so you can turn left and right you can go backwards and forwards in the cave and you can fire uh, you've got four different colours of missile to fire and which one you're currently selected to fire shows because it's flashing there but you can switch between them by pressing one, two, three and four as you can see different ones are flashing there uh, the aim of each level is to kill any creatures on the level uh, collect the gems that they drop and then go and kill a dragon at the end of the level um, so let's go and find something to shoot Each of the different gems and weapons does a slightly different task, which we'll see when we come to them. The red one is the more obvious one, that just shoots stuff to kill. So here's a thing which kind of stays static until you get quite close to it, and then it'll come to life eventually. So you just blast it, and it only took one shot because it's just a fly. Uh, and as you can see, it's left something behind, which is a red gem. You may have just noticed the red gem just lit up in the bottom left corner there. There's uh, two numbers here. Uh, I can't remember what they are. I think that's what level you're on. I can't remember what the six is. Um, I did have to look it up on the internet, uh, but still can't remember because that was a bit earlier on. So it's, it's pretty clever stuff, um, it is the, the basics if you like of an early first person shooter. Um, obviously the level of detail is not great but it does move quite smoothly considering it's on a 64k CPU. So here's another guy. Now the trick for these different characters is to shoot them apparently with the, the most obvious coloured item. Uh, fireball. So let's see what colour this guy ends up. Green. So if we switch to green Apparently if I shoot him, oh he's turning into something else. Oh yeah, the green one transforms the, the thing. Oh. I seem to have died. That didn't go particularly well. 
So let's try again. Uh, so I'm back in the caves and I'm going to try and shoot this thing again, this uh, dragon thing. I'm assuming it's in the same place. Well, there is an enemy in the same place, but it's a different kind of character. Uh, shooting it with the green one didn't seem to do any good whatsoever, so I'm just going to stick with the red one, which is definitely a death-dealing type fireball. So let's, let's shoot this little Viking guy. As you can see, nice animation on him when he gets hit. And there you go, he's dead. So that which I read on the internet about shooting him with the appropriate coloured fireball seems to be a load of crap, which just goes to show you shouldn't believe everything you read on the internet. So I've gone back and polished off the, uh, the little bug uh, for the red gem. So I've got two out of the three gems now. I'm just wandering around the cave uh, trying to find the last one. So as I was mentioning, uh, the movement is pretty smooth considering the power that we're dealing with. And here's another guy to shoot. So let's go and zoom in on this fellow, little uh, winged character. There we go, I've got him. Now that's something you have to be careful of. If you shoot too many times, um, the fireballs actually rebound off the wall. Just pick up the blue gem there. So I've got a full set of gems there. Um, what the gems do is allow you to get through a force field that's uh, guarding the dragon, which we'll come to in due course. Just pick up these other bits and bobs here. There's also a blue thing to pick up there, which freezes time. There is a timer ticking down, which is this thing in the middle here. In fact, that's just reminding me what this is. That's how many minutes you've got left to complete the level. So that's frozen for a little bit now, so I can go and find the dragon. I've also topped up my health by picking up these yellow things. The sounds are pretty basic. You've just got the sort of noise of the little Eidolon machine um, trundling along and various little zapping noises when you're shooting and so on. This gauge on the left tells you how close you are to the dragon, uh, which at the moment is not very close. There we go, I'm getting a bit close to now. No, he must be down here somewhere then. So let's see if we can go and find him. Okay, I'm guessing the dragon's going to be around this corner because I'm getting quite close to him, quite hot so to speak. Here he is. So I can get through his force field because I've got all the gems, so it's just a case of shoot the crap out of him now I guess. Obviously he's shooting back at me as well. And, no, we still haven't got him. He seems to be indestructible. and I'm dead again. Which makes me wonder whether, because he was a green dragon, I should have been shooting him with the green ones and that's where the using the right cord fireball comes into effect. So, I'll give it another go. So I'm going after the dragon again. I'm going to switch to the green fireballs this time, see if that makes any difference. Let's hope so. Here he is. Well, it seems to be flashing, so I must be getting him. Will I get him before he gets me, is the question. Oh, I've run out of those now. That's not good. Still don't really know what's going on here. Dead again. I honestly don't get it. So having tried the, the green ones and had no effect, I'm going to try again with the with the red ones just hammer it for all it's worth. Ah, oh, there we go. And there's the level complete with 1,840 1, points. I don't know what that was different to the first time around, but there you go. Level complete. Uh, and now it appears to be a multi-load as it's now loading in the next level. So level two is now loaded with a very familiar looking screen. Just a note for this music which is very cool and atmospheric, sets the mood quite nicely. But let's get on with the game again. And uh, it all looks rather similar. Something's making a, 
annoying sort of chugging noise there. Uh, so I guess what I'm faced with is a, is a probably slightly bigger maze to wander around. Let's see what we can find as we wander around here. Ooh, and a new looking alien, kind of, well alien. <laughs> new monster that looks like an alien with big bug eyes. So let's, uh, before we activate him, let's look at what some of these other missiles can do. Number four is the... Uh, blue one which is supposed to freeze him apparently number three changes him into a different creature does it? I oh, know it's just rebounded off him it's not very helpful oh I've killed myself hmm I find this game a little bit frustrating so I'm having another go at uh, level two thankfully you don't have to load level one back in and start from the beginning uh, and it is a bigger cave and we've also got an added hazard of fireballs flying around here as you can see backwards and forwards there let's try and avoid them which I didn't do very successfully oh I found the dragon already that's a bit worrying and he's awake I don't fear this is going to end particularly well Firing red ones at him is definitely not doing anything here, so I'm going to try. No, oh, he's killed me. There's a lot of death in this game. Um, so I'm just going to round it up because, frankly, I've got a bit bored of it now. Uh, it's very nicely put together, uh, quite atmospheric, um, interesting to explore the caverns, but it just seems to be totally uh, random as to whether you can kill certain enemies. There must be some kind of strategy involved, which I haven't quite worked out yet. I'll just continue having a little wander around while I carry on talking. But graphically, it's very uh, impressive for the time. There is obviously a lot of grey on the screen, uh, but it does do a nice representation of a cave. And as I mentioned earlier, the movement around the cave is quite smooth. Uh, and sound-wise, it's reasonable. It's nothing to really write home about, apart from the music between each level is quite nice. I don't know what I'm doing here, I can't find anything. Oh, here's a, my old friend the fly, which is very easy to kill. So there's a blue gem. Uh, but yeah, I just, I'm getting a bit frustrated by not being able to work out how to kill the dragons at the end of each level. It seems to be completely random almost as to how you're supposed to do it. Um, so, is it worth the I don't know, one ninety nine or two ninety nine, probably two ninety nine asking price for a game like this. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm a bit torn because it's obviously quite a good technical achievement, but is it a good, a good enjoyable game? Maybe back then it probably was. Now I'm not so sure. Um, so I'm gonna just have another crack at this dragon here. Oh, right. Well, this is something we've not seen before, at least. Uh, you can't get to him at the moment because I need a green gem because he's got this green force field around him. So uh, enough video, I think. You get the idea about the game. Um, it is considered a classic. I'm not entirely sold on it. Uh, so we shall leave it there and I'll go off and try and find this green gem. Well, I can't resist having one more crack at the dragon. So I'm going to try and hit him with yellow fireballs since the red ones didn't seem to do anything. Let's see what happens. Well, he's flashing yellow. It's not boding well. I've got no fireballs left now. He's firing multi cord ones at me. No, dead again, and that's enough for me. I can't work it out, and it's getting on my nerves now. <laughs> Dark side. Two, one, zero.